Hey everyone, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and I am thrilled to be in the Collider Sundance Studio, sponsored by Saratoga Spring Water. Thank you, Saratoga. <laughs> Thank you, Saratoga. I see you right there. Yeah. It costs a whole bunch of money to be Ooh, at Sundance. And glass, not plastic. Yeah, exactly. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very good. Mm. Um, and I've actually been, okay, anyway, we're off on a tangent. <laughs> so I really want to congratulate you guys um, on sometimes I think about dying. <laughs> right? I've been butchering it all day. Sometimes I think about dying. Um, so jumping in, I want to say a sincere congratulations for being part of Sundance. Um, I love this festival, and I'm curious. I want to start right, actually, from the beginning. Most people aren't who are watching this will not have seen the movie yet, and they might not have seen the short film that it's based on. Mm -hmm. So how have you been describing it to like friends and family? Well, I've been describing it as a woman named Fran who lives in a small seaside town, and she lives a very simple life. Um, but she's pretty convinced that everyone else around her is really good at being a person and she's not. She feels really hard to connect with others, even though I think deep down she really wants to. Um, I think that she is unsure how to live life in a meaningful way. Um, I think that she is searching for some way to make sense of that feeling of being lost and lonely. Um, and so that's really what where she's at. But the story that we follow is one of her um, learning how to find joy in the very small idiosyncrasies of life, that that's actually the secret. It's not some big, amazing event that descends on you and helps you transcend life. It's actually focusing on the details of like what you had for breakfast and enjoying that and looking at someone's eyes and having a conversation and sharing tea. And that that's actually the secret. It's really simple. But she gets there in a way that's really funny it's actually quite comic and heartwarming and sometimes heartbreaking and fun conversations on slack oh yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but seriously like that's how we occupy our time right it's not i don't i've never jumped out of a plane i don't know what it's like to like save humanity but i do know what it's like to share a joke with a friend over text mm -hmm. and that really making your day um, I know what it is to surprise someone with a muffin for breakfast and that like sparking a conversation and it soothing maybe an otherwise really tedious day. And like those are the dramas of my life. And I don't think that makes them small dramas or insignificant. I actually think they're really significant. And it Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone back here, that thing's rolling. <laughs> this is, you know, I mean, that's the thing I like about Sundance, though, and in interviews like this, is that we're not in like the Four Seasons in a hotel. Mm. It's it's very much like we're here just to celebrate movies yes. and like warts and all. You know, however we do this. But for all four of you, uh, I'm curious, what was it about the script and story that said, "Oh, I absolutely want to do this. Uh, th I have to do this." Daisy. Um, I'm actually also going to steal a bit of Brit's answer from yesterday, too. Um, I mean, initially, I just think the script was beautiful. I thought the character was wonderful, but also the setting was beautiful. I always got to the end, and however many times I read it before we got there, I always cried at the end because I was like, it's the, I think, um, do you wish you could unknow me is the saddest thing I think I've ever read. But also um, the tiny victory of someone establishing some sort of connection. Yeah which is the most difficult thing for them was always beautiful. And to Brittany's point, sorry. <laughs> it was also just the thought of being part of a group of people. And honestly, it exceeded expectations. We actually all loved each other, love each other so much. And we had such a great time on set. But it was really wonderful to be part of a group of people who were so distinct and unique. And um, and Rachel really let everybody like live their most best beautiful lives on film. I'm just going to take Daisy's answer yeah. and say it was a beautiful <laughs> script. Yeah. And everybody's great. <laughs> but I did connect with Fran's uh, character. Like, I've gone through some of that stuff and still go through some of that stuff. So I wanted to be a part of it. It got really sad no, by the end of it. Sure. But now do you feel happy? <laughs> Looking into your eyes, I do. Bless you. <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> Brittany, can I go next? Do you mind? Yes. For, but um, I don't know, like there are a lot of, I always forget about this with this project, is my character's name is Garrett. And when you're Parvesh, you don't get to play a lot of Garretts often. You don't get to play a character where it's just the character first, where we don't have to deal with what's his orientation, what's his race. And then knowing that like Dave was in as like the male lead, romantic 
lead in a sense. I'm like, wait, well, you know, like we we don't get to do that that often. I this mean, is, I don't look like. <laughs> no, don't 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 do that. Don't do that. We're on a up. We're on a up. Okay. We're gonna take it. You do belong. We yeah. do belong, and we are part of this world. So it was just so, and I've told, I've spoken with Rachel about this. It was so casually diverse. We have people with disabilities. We have every color, every race under the rainbow on it. But that's not the priority. You know, it's still the story of Fran and connecting and loneliness. But for me, that is a big draw. That is a big draw when I, I don't want to like swing that pendulum. Like I am not shy of my Indianness or my gayness. But even my own partner asked, like, was your character gay? I'm like, up to you to decide. And so that was just a gift for some of us actors. You know, we, ha we have to view it with that lens before we even read the script. And then seeing Rachel's other film was my big reason why I wanted to do it. Brittany, my love. Hi. Um, I, I really, uh, the script actually, uh, it scared me a little bit when I read it, just because it was so vulnerable. And, and I think feelings uh, that Fran and many of us feel is a really terrifying thing because we always keep it in the shadows and uh and just being able to be a part of of kind of creating the environment uh and helping helping make that uh atmosphere uh come to life and with the contrast of the outside world and fran's internal monologue <laughs> which we see on daisy's face but it's not <laughs> you know we it was there about in the public script. and private a lot didn't we yes yeah. we did i remember that so that was a reason why I wanted to uh, be a part of this. And it was a wonderful experience. One, one of the things, first, I just want to uh, address what you said, which I totally agree with. Yeah. I think that it was, it's, uh, it's great when films have that diversity, but it's not being, it's not, it's, that's not the point. It, but right. it's just, it's part of it. It's, that, it's real, and that's one of the things I really loved about the film, is just real people, you know? Absolutely. And yeah. So one of the things that, it. exactly, one of the things, obviously the office setting, is everything. If that doesn't work, <laughs> yeah. this movie does not work. Yes. <laughs> so talk a little bit about filming the office settings. Was it all done at once? And how did you want to shoot it and, you know, and play it to make it feel like, you know, this has been happening for, you know, years and years? Yeah, that was a huge concern, uh, not in terms of negative concern, but just uh, something that occupied my thoughts, I'm sure their thoughts, uh, all of my department heads' thoughts uh, when we were prepping, because that was so much of the lifeblood of the story, as you said. Um, well, it definitely started with design and thinking about what is this place. And the script was written with so much invitation for my own creativity to take hold. Um, them, the writers all being from the theater, they were incredibly specific in the psychology. So the actors, the motivations, all the food you need to make good decisions. But there was so much space to invent. And I got to sort of decide, okay, where is this office? What mm -hmm. is it, what do they do? Where are they at? And when I went to Oregon, I just saw this fishing world, this port world and the seaside world. And I wanted to en engage with the environment there, uh, the industries there and really showcase a sense of place. So that was the first thing. And then from there, we created an environment that had to look lived in. I wanted it to look like um, this was a place that maybe got renovated in 1992 and still hasn't <laughs> yet uh, seen new anything. Um, and I wanted to make sure that the actors all had uh, their desks were designed with some character in mind where they could interact with their computers. They had assets they could play with. You had us bring Stuff. talismans. Yes. Yep, you had to bring five our, pieces. Right. And, but you couldn't show me until we were there. Nope. Um, and sometimes they were kept as secrets. Sean's were all secrets. And I brought nothing. <laughs> well, I was like, my character, I had to fly a long way. So I was like, can I fit five things in my bag? But also I was like, Fran wouldn't have things on her desk. No, but that's the right choice. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, just like positive space and negative space, you know, either is an additive. And I think uh, that was the right choice. And, and that still worked and it worked very well. Mm -hmm. um, so that contributed to it. And then in terms of shooting it, um, Obviously, we had these scripted pieces, and I know Dustin and I uh, wanted every angle to be fresh. We never reused a, a setup um, for any given scene. Um, that kind of variety allowed us to maximize the photographic and, and emotional potential of this space that we didn't want to feel too tired in terms of how we're engaging with the image, because we also knew that it was designed to be kind of um tired in terms of its aesthetics um so there was that idea and then with the aliveness and 
even what you were saying about humanity being so important to the characterizations, it was very important to the storytelling. So I let them play. You absolutely do. She, Rachel <laughs> is one of the most gentle directors I've worked with, where there would be times when we would, it was theater camp. So we were also just like <laughs> hanging out and just like act and just in character all day. Yes. And then we'd be talking and then all of a sudden you'd see Rachel like, like, Brittany, go. And I'd be like, oh, we're filming. Are you <laughs> yeah, just filming. Are you see uh, Dustin, the camera team, kind of like spider over to yeah. the corner? <laughs> and like turn the camera on. I'm like, oh, we're just, let's just keep going. You know, yeah. like, and it was, that it was, was so much play. It was encouraged that they would live in their spaces, that the idle time would be used as play time. Um, even in scripted scenes, like the conference room scene, where <laughs> we, you know, let people's instincts run. And they're so great a company. I mean, it was like we were a rep company. They would do it. We'd do like a couple runs and we'd be improving, but they, we would know what was working. Or the, they would know that as a company what was working and they would remember those beats. So even when we went back to the edit, we had cut points everywhere because they go, oh, that beat's working. Mm -hmm. And they would still make sure that we could get that set like a good theater company. Yeah, and no um, improviser likes when you repeat stuff. I mean, or when you, I love that the writers gave such freedom yeah. with the script and so much room for play, but you have the parameters. Mm -hmm. The impro improv within scripted works, you have to go by that. You can't say like, oh, I have 10 kids. Like, uh, uh act one said you have none, you know? That's right. <laughs> and I always so remember specific. like that yeah. there are moments that you do remember that like, just stay within these confines. Well, you have a playable reality in given circumstances. And then that, that sets your limits, which then actually opens the door to opportunity and choice as an actor, I think. I'm curious for the actors when you, by the way, how long did you have to actually make the movie? Is, did you have a, a, like a, was it a 20 yes. something day? Is it the 40? I mean, let me, I'll actually let me think about it. No, have a guess, have a guess. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna, uh, 25 to 35? 18. Was it 18? 21. Was it 21? Wow. Was it? Yeah. I'm well, because sure we, we had like day well, cause 18. Because we, well, we had like a day, well, it's a okay, shooting day you, where you were like, where we did a lot of the stuff with the visions. Yes, and you went uh, off and did all the seaside stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will also say, we wrapped early many days. Many. And I'm talking like hours early. Yes. Rachel was very deliberate and very intentional and knew what we needed to get, and we got it. And that was that. And I was yeah, blessed I with a company too. I also yeah. like how I gave myself a ten day window. Yeah, to, <laughs> I mean, look, the problem is like, here's the thing though. It's like it's very hard when you're not a Marvel movie or a mega budget movie. Financing is really, really hard nowadays. And so, you know, it, you don't have a lot of time. It's you have to do everything in a very tight schedule. So for the actors, I was just going to say everyone had to hunker down, and there were a lot of um, you know financial sacrifices made for individuals particularly the producers in coming in and making it work and people were doing like five different jobs and like one of our producers was our first AD, like everyone was doing that. So it really, not just cast wise, crew wise, it really felt like a company too. Mm -hmm. So obviously when you're making a film with a, a tight schedule and you got to hit your marks and days, uh, for all four of the actors, I'm curious, what day did you have on the schedule uh, where that you had circled where you're like, oh, this is gonna be a really tough day or was it every day? Uh, oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I, I was gonna say every day. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. The first day was nervous. I was nervous probably a week and a half. Meeting everyone, really? I not. You, well, I was uh, completely nervous the whole time, but the highest in a week and a half. But I think the boathouse was a long one. Yeah. Long we knew but, that was gonna be tough. But also, we were given a lot of room. It wasn't like we have to fulfill all of these things, yeah. and there's no room to like play in that, and no oh, room yeah. to sort of get it wrong and try things and. So not, so, I mean, my thing was just the the house after mm -hmm. the car, because right. I was like, whew, right. to be alone and have to that do all funny. of that. And it's not the, I don't know that it's, it's the lowest point I would say for Fran. So I was very aware of like, whew. Um, but also by that point we knew how amazing all the crew were and treating the set so carefully and so respectfully. Um, so also there was a lot of comfort in that when you know that everyone is just, together on the journey. Yeah, I, I agree. I, 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 was, I don't re really remember how long I, I was there for. Maybe like a, a week? A week and a half. Right, the first, because I only stayed a few days after you. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, you had the extra, yeah, it was a week, it was a full week of shooting. Yeah, yeah. for, for the office, uh, it, was, it was, I would say, I know I wasn't there for the whole shoot, but just the experience of, of it, it's so impressive to me that you guys 
had so many corners that had to be cut, but it was it was the most pleasant experience mm -hmm. on a job I've ever had. We all it was it was and to wrap hours early yeah. and, and be so intentional, but then to have the freedom that we had. Yeah. I mean, normally that I wasn't like I lost me. I mean, it was just you guys were so good. We still had room to play. I got to play even beyond what you guys were doing. And then it was like, you know, go home, rest, be prepared. That's more important than me. I don't know, indulging myself needlessly. Yeah. The meet and greet. Our first cast and crew dinner when we all got to Storio. Yeah. Oh, that was scary. That was, I was the scary. That was scary. Thing. That was scary. Because like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know who was who. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah. I literally, I did like, Dave. I went to Dave first. Is that and a then rogue? Some place we remember yeah, 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 over yeah, the bridge yeah, on the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah, it was no, because was we were scary. both ethnic. Yeah, that, well, that's true. I didn't. Yes, it's true. That's I didn't go to my brown know. brother first. I was like, I know you. <laughs> but that was the scariest that was part. Scary. Yeah, because like yeah, Brittany yeah. walks in, I'm like, oh. and then da Daisy, you you still have that moment of like the yeah. first time you meet Daisy, it's still like, oh, that's Daisy, and then by the end, you're like, Daisy. But like. That is the most nerve wracking because you just you don't know what it's going to be. But after that dinner, then shooting, I, I hope at least for those of us in the office, was cake yeah. in the sense because we knew we were going to be taken care of. But literally walking into the restaurant was like, oh, my God, please like me. First day of school. Yeah, is that vibe. I drove to the wrong. I drove through that, you know, that bridge. <laughs> yeah. So when I first got there. I went on that bridge. And Wait, I was the like, big one over the water? Yeah, I was like, no. I'm leaving Astoria. And I was like, where am I going? <laughs> Canada. I was going back to Canada. <laughs> Oregon to Washington. Yeah. You're back home. Uh, yeah. I'm never letting you drive me. <laughs> I got better, bro. I got better. <laughs> I did. I had a whole uh, three weeks to practice in a rental car. <laughs> Daisy would drive That's us great. around. There would be a lot of times like we'd wrap early. We're like, all right, let's or go. Jordan. Go to the restaurant. Yeah. Let's go to the bar. And I'd be like, Daisy, can you drop us off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or that, remember that haunted, you sent an article when we filmed in that town, you sent an article the next day that the town and that theater was haunted. Mm -hmm. It was the most haunted place in Oregon. Wait, yeah. really? The theater, right? Yeah, the yeah. movie theater. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah it's the most haunted town in Oregon. It looks pretty haunted yeah. in the film. I was like, <laughs> that's scary. I, I know it's old. Even the deer, surprised. the deer said it was haunted. <laughs> oh, I ran deer. into a deer. Who we went to the, the Goonies house? Ran. Oh, I off. did. Yeah. yeah. We went out because we're in Astoria, Oregon. Yeah. So yeah. kindergarten cop, free willy. Went to the film museum, which was the old jail. Really? I didn't Fun. make it there, was it? Uh, I literally, I went around it in 20 seconds, but it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now. A lot Done. of, a lot of photos it, of free willy. They're is very it, proud of it. Isn't Astoria the Goonies? Yeah. Goonies, Goonies. Kindergarten cop, free willy. And sometimes I think about dying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Goonies is actually one of my favorite films. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I mean, that movie. Anyway, that's a completely separate thing. So <laughs> jump, jump. Uh, I like talking about editing because it's where the film obviously comes together. Absolutely. So how did the film change in the editing room in mm -hmm. ways that perhaps you weren't expecting? Um, there's definitely specific scenes and moments that uh, metamorphosed or developed in the edit. Um, but we were anticipating that it might, but we were opening ourselves up to discovery based on the bits that we found. Because as we mentioned, there was a lot of play. Um, and we wanted to fill out that environment and that world with all of these idiosyncras idiosyncrasies, relationships, beats. So we anticipated a lot of the office to be in a lot of invention in terms of how do we build that into the spine of the written story. So there was that aspect of it. And then there's a section you mentioned with Slack screens. Um, <laughs> and that that we definitely had that conversation um, in the script. But Ryan and I really wanted to find something that continued to create the sense of 360 life um, to have their conversation be rooted in an ongoing reality that is sort of ricocheting off of it emotionally. We thought it would create uh, a unique kind of energy. It would also um, heighten the sense of how she's behaving with around others. We wouldn't lose touch with that, how our outsides can be interacting with our insides. Uh, and so we wanted to have this other energetic conversation, somewhat hilarious conversation going on around them. And so it kind of came on, it came out as this like Altman-esque <laughs> moment of like 360 life conversations going on around the Slack screen. It kind of heightened almost like to a, a a Keaton S mania to it or something. So that was really fun to discover that. Um, and then the opening was an entire discovery as well. We knew we wanted to have um, about a handful of really intentional photographs that could live as their own pieces of still art, if need be. 
Um, and they had to follow certain rules when we shot them. They had to be something that Fran would notice or see if she was walking to or from work in the morning or the evening. So it also had to be at certain times of the day that would believably be on her walk. Mm -hmm. And it had to connect with the things that she's feeling, loneliness, uh, the, the, uh, the beauty of the unseen, strange thing, um, nature in places it shouldn't be, that merging of the fantasy and reality. So we had those things, but what is that arrangement? What is the uh, associative grammar telling the audience? Not only what is each image saying, but what is that progression? And marrying that with a piece of music that had to be designed as well by mm. Dabney. Uh, it was a huge collaboration, that opening, me, Dabney, and, and Ryan. So. That was, I don't know how that answered your question. No, 100%. It, the Absolutely. interesting thing about doing a Sundance interview is that I, I have so many specific questions, but because no one has seen the movie, I, I don't want to spoil anything. Sure. Yeah. So this is a very like, I don't want to say it's a superficial conversation, like, but it's, you can't go deep. Mm -hmm. I can't ask you about any party scene and mm -hmm. bathtub sequence or, right. you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to avoid, but still yeah. say <laughs> words that people might understand. Also, that sounds totally different than what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I will actually say on the editing front in a general way, which I found very interesting, yeah. is um, the more emotional, if one should call it that, which one shouldn't because everything is an emotion, the more um, uh, demonstrative yeah. emotional scenes for Fran, yeah. you trimmed a little. And I found it interesting because I was like, oh, OK, cool. So it felt a little less sentimental from what we filmed to yeah. what I saw. Yeah. But it was quite profound because then when my mom saw the film, she was so overwhelmed with emotion that I was like, huh, what do you know? And you it was a like really... A, just to make, so you're meaning like um, some of the scenes where you're talking with, with Robert? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So there's, well, there's a scene where there was a, a sort of leading up to it that wasn't in there. So it just is just the shot of me on the sofa. Yeah. And then um, the end of the film, um, where me and Dave had a scene together, you used uh, takes which were a little more contained mm -hmm. and it was just a very interesting exercise because I was like okay cool um, and it still was so uh, tangible mm -hmm. that it was really interesting because Rachel's spoken about the fact that it's not sort of using and it's not um, the film isn't there's like no agenda to what this is it's just a story about some people and connecting and um, because there's no judgment on it. I don't, I, like, I'm not explaining it right, but it was a very interesting editing choice mm -hmm. I found, because watching mm -hmm. it, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. There was just more, when we were working on it, it there was just more uh, in, in what was being fought against mm -hmm. as opposed to being re always released. And so when there was release, it felt like you could feel the work it took for her to release at mm -hmm. all. Um, but it was also, there was a couple things. One, I remember when we were getting towards the end of the shooting, your own instincts as an actor, you were coming to me and saying, I think I think that this line, I think I can just clip that. Mm -hmm. And you were feeling that she doesn't want, mm -hmm. to, that, she, that you were already psychologically and emotionally pushing the character in that direction, mm -hmm. not only in your work, but in how you were coming to me mm -hmm. about those scenes towards mm -hmm. the end. And so I think it came from those instincts on your part, and it not only came from the performance, but it certainly informed me going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so, in I can't imagine what it's like as an actor where you have made a movie and you're not exactly sure what, because you've given so much, so many different versions of a performance or you, you don't really know what the movie's gonna be mm -hmm. until you watch it and then I, I can't imagine what that is like. Happily uh, surprised. You're always, yeah. I think for most of us, we hadn't seen it. I, you know, like, and I was surprised how funny it was. Mm -hmm. And the edit, and that's why like coming from TV, you know, multicam even like you make fr or single cam, you make friends with the editor because it's the editor who is going to make me look like either a cloying asshole or a comedic genius. <laughs> and it, it is because we just said we just say jokes, but it's that timing. It's that bit. Will they laugh? You build in that kind of almost that room for a laughter in a theater. Like it's that's what I thought about all the time. Like the edit made, was funny. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and getting the timing. Yeah, I mean. What you said. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Hey, listen, um, I'm a, I, I have to wrap with you guys, but before I wrap, I know they're going to kill me. Um, Daisy, I think you're starting to film a movie on Monday, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> uh, which is why I you're am. leaving Sundance. So what would you like to tell about this project? Because I know it's very personal to you. I would also say another shout out to the producers of Sometimes I Think About Dying, who were very helpful because um, we were at early stages then, and they really gave me, Alex was very generous and giving me a producer credit on Alex this movie. Sachs. But they were very open with how it was made and uh, in terms of the financials of making a movie, which I hadn't done before. 
Um, so thank you. Um, the movie uh, follows a family, a woman who is um, at home with a baby um, pushed slightly beyond her limits and her husband who is chaperoning their daughter into a film set um, and who falls in love with the actress playing the mother. And it's uh, fantasy versus reality and what things mean and different perspectives and what they lend to um, how we view characters and also what the audience's biases may inform when they're projecting onto the characters. So it's a lot of um, things, but my husband Tom wrote it. Um, it's excellent and we have an amazing uh, cast and crew. And honestly, from working on this, like, it's just like the power of what people can do together. If everyone is like, this is what we're doing. We're holding hands. We're like, you know, we have limited time. We have limited budget. Mm -hmm. This is what we have to do. And we get to be part of amazing things. It's are you the mom or are you the... I'm the mom. Hey. Yeah. It's called Magpie. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, what, <laughs> just to confirm the title. Um, okay, listen, I have to stop with you guys. Uh, I'm just going to say, seriously, congrats on being part of Sundance. I wish you guys nothing but the best, and enjoy the afternoon. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, folks.